welcome to inspiring conversations 3 well today is the third episode of ic and as usual you all know that it is my duty a duty given to me that is introduce our good friend agnello rajesh athayat agnello rajesh athayat the unbeatable the invincible who can never be understated overstated or exaggerated he is amulya unique one of a kind right shugra i'm sure she has her opinion to it <laughs> please ask her again <laughs> be it a teacher of information technology be it a businessman a builder a father a husband a social entrepreneur he learns earns returns and most of it all he masters them all rajesh to each and every one in the select audience is our friend first a business associate mentor teacher buddy he means so many things to so many people a multifaceted guru and a master blaster at whatever he does so without much ado over to the one and only agnello rajesh athayat so good evening friends we are back again for the next session of inspiring conversations and today we have a very interesting guest with us today here you've all seen her now and we are going to grill her <laughs> can i invite the lovely suzanne roshan on stage please Thank Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. You're not going to grill me. <laughs> uh, but before we start our discussion, let's have an introduction of Suzanne. I would like to introduce Suzanne. Our distinguished guest for tonight is Miss Suzanne Roshan. Suzanne has practiced the art of interior and product design for many years. Her first cue came from watching her mother, the celebrated Zareen Khan, who designs spaces for a discerning clientele. Following that illustrious lead, Suzanne Roshan obtained an associate degree in interior design from Brooks College, Long Beach, California, in the year 1995. Over 15 years of working with clients across the world and a variety of materials, Suzanne has realized that there are no rules in design. If one can imagine it, one can create it. It's all in the details. After many years of successfully completing prestigious design projects, She is now well known as a great architectural and conceptual designer. Suzanne has further integrated to set up her own design store, the Charcoal Project. The store carries exclusive lines by design talents as well as our own line. Additionally, it also retails products from across the world, carefully selected and curated by Suzanne. 
Friends, Susan has been a wonderful personality and it's a pleasure interacting with her. She is a very warm and passionate person for whom design is life. She aspires to create structures which will be perpetual in the memories of people. Here I present you Ms. Susan Roshan, an entrepreneur par excellence, an entrepreneur who has mastered the skills of customer satisfaction and customer retention. Let us interact with Suzanne and understand the strategies she adopts for businesses. I am sure there will be a learning in everything that we discuss. Let's enjoy the session together. Once again, I welcome you for another episode of Inspiring Conversations. Well, friends, I am sure each one of you is ready with questions. But before you shoot off, I would like to begin mine. We will have that in the second session. First, we will have a discussion. And uh, Suzanne is having, the last three days were lovely for her. She was absolutely nervous of what's going to be asked to her. Well, uh, Suzanne, the Honorable Shakespeare, unfortunately was not a businessman. So he could afford to say what's there in the name. But what's there in the name, the charcoal project? Can you explain it to all of us? Yes, I would love to explain that. First, before I explain it, I want to welcome everyone here and um, and I'm really touched by your whole chat about me and how you, you know, introduced me. And I'm, um, and I'm honored to be here and I'm in looking forward to this even though I'm really nervous right now. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, Charcoal Project is, is something that was, it was something that came to me when I was a little girl. I think I must have been five years old when design and the whole history of art and architecture played a huge part and a huge impact on me. And as I grew, I knew that I wanted to own a store one day, a store which was different, which was conceptual, which had a story. It wasn't about the furniture you sell or about the products, but it was about the, the whole passion of the experience. And that's what I wanted to do for Charcoal Project. Now, Charcoal Project, why Charcoal Project? Charcoal, when you see it in, you know, in life, it's black. And it has no, um, it ha it's not beautiful. It's just, it could look like an ugly rock. But there is this quality when you ignite, when you fire it up. So when I enter a space, I feel that the space is like charcoal. It's dead, it has no excitement, there's nothing to it. But the life that you give to it and what you ignite into it, it becomes special. And so charcoal project, every project that I do, I want it to be charcoal project for me. That's what the Fantastic. <laughs> uh, entrepreneurship for everybody has different uh, uh, interpretation. What according to you is entrepreneurship? Entrepreneurship is just one word, Agnello, passion. If you love what you do, and if you can visualize what you want to achieve, then there is nothing in the world that can stop you. And that is something that we must keep in mind and keep propagand propagating and putting out there because all the youngsters, all the young artists and all the talent should also think like this and not feel fear or, or some kind of block. Because there is, there is this instinct that makes you different and makes each person an individual. So the person, the way they think, their thoughts and the way they want to do a business or a service will be different to everybody else. So if I believe that each person has an entrepreneur in them, and that the goal is to find that and to decide what you want to do to your best capacity. Fantastic, fantastic. I think uh, design is something which you have professionally qualified for. Design is something that you have been seeing it from your childhood because your mother herself is a renowned uh, designer in this country and world over. So that's something you learned from your childhood. You also formally learned it in California. How did you think about venturing into business on a big scale? What encouraged you to get into business? Because business has many other aspects, accounting, government policies, uh, people, managing them, making them productive, making them work as a team. So how did you do all that? Honestly, I had no rules. 
when I started off, I had no, um, I had no kind of structure as in every mistake that we made as a company was my learning. And each mistake brought me into a realization of wanting to learn an aspect that I didn't really get into, like administration, operations. Because in a business, being an entrepreneur, you can imagine and you can want things, but the eventuality is the, you know, it's the whole kind of joining the dots. It's connecting all the dots and all the people, all the team have to provide that service correctly. So I understood that to create that, I need to hire good people. I need to have good minds, minds who are open to change, minds who wanted to grow. And that's when we kept hiring people on instinct. It was more of an instinct and less of experience. And we grew together as a company. Today, I call my team Team Charcoal. They all are here today, and I'm very proud of them. <laughs> so it's been a journey, and there has been a lot of learning. And yes, I cannot say that there are no mistakes. But I'm happy for those mistakes, because that's where you learn, and you know you're going to be better. Fantastic. So you believe in teamwork? 100%. There is no single person who can do it all. There is a team that can do it. If there is a goal, if there's a vision, if there is something that needs to be done, it's a team effort. Now, how good is your team is how much love and uh, you know how much of commitment that you give them to empower them to do better for you. And that's what I think has been my like, biggest learning as I've grown into this business. How do you inspire your people? How do you inspire your teams to improve on productivity and take that extra mile? How do you inspire them? Um, normally, what, what I, w I have a couple of people that I use as my inspiration in life. And the biggest one for me is Steve Jobs. And I used to watch his videos. I used to get his, uh, all his uh, you know, sayings and everything. Then I got them printed out. And I gave it to my team and I said, I want you all to watch the video. I want you all to put this up in your cabins, in your spaces. And basically, I think that it's all about me as they see, they look up to me with so much love. And if I don't motivate them to be their best, that's what is going to make all of us grow as a company. So motivation is the only way that you can you know, incentivize, you, motivi you motivate, and you grow together. That's very important. Uh, there are two schools of thought for growth. One is to add more people and make your organization bigger. The other school of thought is collaborate and grow bigger. The third school of thought is do both simultaneously. What would you like to say about growth? How would you like to grow? I think that it's a bit of both. You need to have an organization that can handle the amount of pressure, because there are different departments. There's a design department, there's operations, there's administrations. Now, each person has to be good at what they do, and we have to divide their work correctly so nobody feels over, you know, overbed and overloaded. Uh, and at the same time, you need to collaborate outside with associates who can help you, as in the person who's the founder, grow. Because there is this much that a person can do. But if there is an intelligent mind that you have an instinct that this mind can help you go forward in your business, collaboration is one of the most important things, according to me. Then in, to, in harmony with your team, who are your everyday team, plus your associates and your collaborators, they could be from all over the world. Today, the world has become really small. You can do a lot of work even on mail and, you know, on iChat. Technology is a huge asset. So these things, you have to kind of understand what is, what is the need, what is, your, what is the need to collaborate, and what, what is that, you know, fusion going to help. So I think that it's a bit of both that makes a big difference. So you're a big believer of collaborative working. You, you need collaborative partners. 100%. And what are the parameters that you identify 
to get into a collaboration. And can you name a few collaborations? Like you have mm -hmm. a collaboration with the Berger company, you have collaboration with some of the top architects globally. Yes, so what I do normally is that like even if we have um, some of the architects that I have really followed and uh, you know had a very reputable organization. So I decide, I said, you know, there is, okay, I'll give you an example. There's one rendering company and the rendering company is in Paris, France, but nobody has done rendering from them from this part of the world. So they ask me, my team asked me that why should we choose them? Why don't we choose somebody else? But then you understand that that collab collaboration is going to bring a new language in your design because that will set you apart from what everybody else is doing. And so how are you going to set yourself apart? You need to be different and you need to be something surprising, something... Sp so the collaboration between the Paris company and me is an important asset. Even if it is a little bit more expensive, it's going to be better for the future. So this is the way you have to analyze. You have to analyze what is correct for your company and your growth, you know. That's how I do it. Fantastic. Uh, people, you all will be surprised to know, Suzanne is so passionate about designs that she did her first project of interiors when she was only 19 years of age. At 19 years of age, she did her first project, after which she decided to pursue officially in California. Uh, Suzanne, can you throw light on what difference did the Californian education make to your learning? I just think that um, there is a very strong um, design brain that, that, gets, that can get activated with the correct teaching and the correct atmosphere. Atmosphere teaching is what can inspire a child to be better. And fortunately for me, I was lucky enough to go to California at 17. And I was lucky enough to be in that environment. And that was a huge uh, asset to me. Because I think that the first day of my design class, the teacher told me this one line, which I will never forget, that there is no wrong design. So if you can prove it and explain it, it's correct. So there itself you are opening up the child's mind to understand that okay fine if I if I just need to think this through so you are giving them the impetus to think which we don't unfortunately uh, we need to you know put into our kids especially in the design world over here I feel that sometimes sadly we are constricted by the rule book or by some sort of like you know specifics that you have to stay in and I think that it's important to let an artistic mind flow. And that is something which we need to bring in. I want to do that eventually. I want to open a design school, which I spoke to Agnello about, and bring in more talent because India is filled with such great talent. I have such amazing people. But if they had even more of an, uh, of, of an environment or a teaching, it would make them grow to a certain capacity. And that's what I... I think made a huge difference in my life. Fantastic. So, Suzanne, what I feel as an entrepreneur is your education does not stop with your formal education. And as an entrepreneur, your winning edge will also be dependent on your learning edge. So, as an entrepreneur today, you're not restricted only to be a design personality. You're an entrepreneur. So, as an entrepreneur today, what is your learning edge? How do you take yourself forward than what it was yesterday? That's the best question you have asked me right now. <laughs> the only way that a person can be open to learning is when the person feels like a child. The person should be open. A child, when I see my children, they are like sponge. Whatever you give them, they will absorb. I feel that when, when youngsters grow into teenagers and they grow into adults, they lose that. They lose the capacity to absorb. They lose the capacity to kind of like be open to take criticism, be open to grow. And even if you are a bachelor's in, you know, the, the best university in architecture, you could be wrong in something that 
a normal person who's from your from your staff could tell you, you know. So the whole thing is that you have to be open and you have to know that that's your learn. For me, that's my learning edge to have an open mind, to have a curious mind. I'm a really curious mind. I go into the details of how a product would be made and how the best thing that we could use of that product. So it, it's all about your interests. Like if you love what you do, you will go deeper into it. So I think that it's the passion in relation to being an open-minded person, not having a closed sensibility of like, you know, just like a child. You're, you're, a, you're a child and this is the playground and now you're going to learn. And now with your learning, you're going to uh, put the, out there better design, better service and make, you know, the world look a little better. <laughs> Fantastic. We learn, like for example, I learn from people like Mr. Suhas Deshpande, I learn from Mr. Kailash Biani, I learn from Mr. Winston Mathias. These are lovely books to read because they have read a lot of books. Exactly. People, 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 so people how, who surround you yes, are very yes. important. So how do you learn? Do you read books? Do you travel? Do you visit uh, exhibitions? Do you meet renowned architects? How do you learn? I think that like, see, if you, if you have the open mind, every individual that you meet, you can learn from. Every creative individual, every person who comes across you, you, you will be able to absorb from places, countries, various types of uh, architecture, art. Art and architecture are huge for me because when you travel is when your mind expands and then you understand what, why, why in those, those places they use those materials. So it's always what if or why, why were they doing all those things. So you keep, you keep your mind curious, you keep your mind activated. And yes, those are the two aspects. The other aspect would be just simple things, events or a service, even little things like a show. You could watch a Broadway show and you could get inspired from that. You could watch a, a, a movie, you could get inspired from a movie. If you have it in you to absorb, you can absorb from anything. That's what I believe. Fantastic. And what is your competitive edge? That is my first question. My second question is, what is competition to you? How, what are your beliefs about this word competition? What is your competitive edge is the first question. I don't really um, like to, you know, be in a game of trying to get to a position in my life. I believe that if you are good at what you do and if you think purely and if it is original design, then you will reach where you want to reach. Your competitors should be your friends. They should be closer to you than your, than your family. Because you, in fact, that's where you learn because you learn what they are doing and they learn from you. And then you can, it, the world is so big and there are so many projects that you can collaborate and work together and provide a better service. So nobody should be a threat. Nobody should be somebody who you are worried for. In fact, you should think of how you can get that person's value added in your life and make your business better. Fantastic, fantastic. I think that's a brilliant takeaway. So actually your competitors are your complimenters. Yeah, you don't totally. Do the, you don't do the homework and you work on them. <laughs> I mean, like, I would give you an example. Andrew Martin, he is my mentor. For your information, friends, Andrew Martin is world's, one of the world's best designers. Yeah, so he's... One of the world's best designers. So Andrew Martin is the brand and Martin Waller is the person. Now, when I met him, like, when I started Charcoal five years ago, I was introduced to him and he came here. There was an empty space and he was in shock with this space and he told me, he gave me the biggest learning. He said, just use your imagination and be the child. Don't think beyond that. And I remember that was the most amazing day for me because 10 years in reverse of that day, I must have been 17 and coming back from California and going 
to London and, and going to the Andrew Martin store and think, looking at all the products and just feeling goose flesh because I said, you know, one day I want to be this good. And then 10 years later, I have the same talent in my store telling me this. So it was, it, it's all about trying to bring in all the energies that you see who, who in real sense, that whole competitor thing is, is not true. It's about how you can bring that to value add in your life, you know? So you do believe in law of attraction? 100%. So you're attracting the right people uh, to you collaborate have to, with you? You, you? you have to believe in your instinct and your laws of attraction and the laws of what your gut tells you because your instinct is your best friend. And in life, when we follow our instincts, whoever we meet and whoever we you know, come in contact with, you know immediately that this person is something that we can do something great together. And then you manifest it. And I believe in manifestation because manifestation is how you make all your visualize, all your, you know, your visions come alive. So I think that it's, it, is, it is a journey that you need to just keep taking those little baby steps because nothing happens overnight. And you should not get disheartened when things go wrong or when people don't like what you're doing at that point. It should be just something that you learn, okay, now I need to do this better. And that's how you can grow, you know. <laughs> Fantastic. Friends, when she designed this store, she wanted to puncture these two big holes in this uh, store so that people can also look down from this punctured slab. Can you see this? And see how the law of attraction or manifestation works. She liked these two models over gorillas. here. <laughs> the two gorillas, large size, one piece, cannot be dismantled. And coincidentally, after she punctured these ceilings, when she liked these gorillas to be brought into the store, there was no other way to bring these gorillas in this store other than this punctured slab. And it was strange. <laughs> it was such, it was an unbelievable like sign from God because it was exactly the same size. And that day I said, okay, thank you. I'm on the right path. <laughs> So I think uh, you will give Michael Lozier a run for his money. Michael Lozier is the guy who is famous and known as the father of law of attraction. Oh, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like how Andrew Martin is to furniture. Yes. That way Michael okay. Lozier is for law of attraction. I will I think read up on that. <laughs> that's, that's a brilliant coincidence. and uh, Brilliant. It's, brilliant. It's, yeah. It's brilliant. Uh, by the way, these two gorillas are sold. They are here just because the guy who has bought them, he's not got his place ready yet. So she is going to be very sad of losing these gorillas. Yeah, so <laughs> and uh, these are very safe gorillas. Even if you keep them in the open garden, they are never going to be robbed. Each one is weighing one ton. <laughs> one ton. So that's amazing. Uh, how do you see, as an entrepreneur, how do you, you see yourself going forward? The eventuality for charcoal project will have to be real estate. And I think that to bring upon bigger and better developments worldwide that would have a lot of my passion, a lot of my love, and a lot of my teamwork to bring again a new product, a new experience, so that you're not, um, so you're not like stuck in one. Each one will be different to the other. There will be some elements that you will be able to tell that this is charcoal project, but yes, so that's my eventual dream. <laughs> Fantastic. And what is your vision? I can give you a tip of improving your vision without knowing it. You need to go to Lawrence and Mayo to have a good vision. <laughs> that is for you personally, but otherwise, what is your business vision? <laughs> you know, the thing is that each day when I come to my store, I, I cross all these buildings which are right now empty because they're in construction. And when I go to Delhi, I cross buildings which are construction. And I just visualize each one of those apartments having products from charcoal. And I just think, I said, you know, if I could charcoal the, the entire environment that wherever I go, if I could charcoal it, 
I know that I would leave some energy from my passion in that space. And I think that's a vision that I want to do eventually, all parts of the world, God willing. But I'm, I think baby steps, have to do it with baby steps. <laughs> Lovely. Let us not measure what are those baby steps because she's already working globally. So <laughs> I don't want to get into the length of those baby steps, but uh, she's doing a marvelous job all across the country, all across the world. We are, I have seen a lot of her uh, work that's uh, happening. And what I understand from your discussions is more than an entrepreneur, you're a passion pruner. I'm a passion pruner. <laughs> Absolutely. So that's, that's what I would call it. Yeah. Uh, now I think if you want to see scales, if you want to see sizes, if you want to understand planning on a larger scales, I've got a very dear friend sitting amongst us here in this crowd. He's one of the most handsome men in the hall. And that's my friend, Mr. Suhash Deshpande. If you want to discuss how you need to develop 100 acres, 200 acres, 500 acres, he loves to do that. So I'm sure uh, there are going to be a lot of collaborating energies here also in the room where we can all work together and grow together. And now I would like to request the audience to ask questions to Ms. Suzanne Roshan. Can we start? Rapid fire. We will, we will ask her very easy questions. She should not be able to answer those questions. Yes, yes, Sidhu. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening. Uh, my question is, uh, is home automation really viable? Does it save time? And home automation? Yeah. Automation is only good up to a point of you as the person understanding it. I think that people sometimes get carried away and want to go into automation beyond what they understand because it's just a show-off gimmick. But I believe that automation does help with certain aspects, like if you can just do your lighting or your TV or some kind of, like five basic automation kind of connects that make it easier for a living. So it should be used as a tool and not as a show-off gimmick. That's what I believe. Excellent, excellent. Quick questions. Yes, yes, Smriti. Okay, Sangeeta, get going. Good evening. Uh, when you establish this wonderful project, in spite mm -hmm. of detailed workings and planning and creative ideas, uh, did you uh, face any unforeseen challenges? How did you tackle it? <laughs> and what is your formula for success? Okay. Uh, you know, there is, n there is nothing smooth that runs till it's not there. So from the time you start, till the time you actually have launched it, everything goes wrong. And the law of nature says that when things go wrong, then things go right. So I believe that when things go wrong, when you're doing, and then you reach the stage where you are about to launch or you're about to go out there, that is when you feel, okay, all that has been worth it. So I think that's what happened with us by the grace of God. And um, my formula for, for success is to be a very humble, good person. I think it's important however much, however, you know, however you grow in life or whatever, wherever you reach, I think humility is the most important aspect for every human being. And to be in touch with society and the needs of all the people around you and to provide for your people a better kind of life so they all grow with you i think that this when you grow together as a company is when you know that you are successful so today if i see a person my architect buying a mercedes benz after the project that he has done with me i will feel really happy because i know he is growing with me and it will not pinch me <laughs> so don't you think that will scare of your customers <laughs> it does not. <laughs> it does not. Because I always get less and I'm always giving more to everyone around. <laughs> well, we should all remember that, friends. <laughs> yes, Rohit. Yeah. Uh, when you design homes, you know, how do you ensure that these homes remain homes and they don't turn into, you know, artificial five-star suites? So it's a very important aspect of, of my life is to understand human needs. 
So when I was in California, we, I, I'm a very big uh, student of psychology. And psychology is when you can understand the needs of your client. So when you're designing for the client, it's very important as a designer not to get carried away and to think only from your point of view. You have to think about their needs. And that's when you will make a home and not a house. So yes, it is the most important thing to not get carried away, to make a home and to understand what you need to provide to that particular family or that particular service, whether it's a hotel or whatever. So yes, that's a key thing that we must keep in mind. Smriti. Hi, Suzanne. Hi. I just wanted to know, um, how do you market the charcoal project? How do you reach out to your customers? And what is the medium that you've used when you started and what are you using now? Do you, or is um, it only you know, inbound now and people just like word of mouth and people come Honestly, out? our marketing skills have been exceptionally weak <laughs> and it has been, uh, it has been a f like we are fortunate enough that the marketing tool that I would see is when you are providing the, the product and you are providing the service, the service talks for itself. So if you are doing a place then that place, how many ever people have come in contact with, will spread your word into the world. So Martin Waller once told me that you don't need to market anything. If you're good, people will find you. So <laughs> the whole thing is that I agree in today's world, it's important to market, it's important to be out there and to be visible because there are so many people who don't know about you. But I haven't really got into aggressive marketing, very honestly, up to now. Is that because your hands are full with your work or? I haven't really put any thought into it because I don't want to do it like um, just as, a, you know, as something that I need to do. If I do it, I need to figure out how to do it. There was one thought that came to me about doing a treasure hunt. I thought that I will hold a treasure hunt of charcoal project every year where I will hide maybe three products all over the city and hold a, a kind of treasure hunt for the people to go and find it and whoever finds it will have it plus they will have a prize money. So you know like some marketing strategies which are interesting would be something that I would like to do for the future not the conventional editorial, you know, that kind of thing, according to me. It's just something that has to have more of a thought. Fantastic. Yes, Sylvester. Hi, Suzanne. At the outset, Hi. thank you for having us here. Thank appreciate, you. Appreciate, appreciate. Uh, I have a very simple question. Uh, Suzanne, you play multiple roles. You are a wife, you're a designer, you have uh, so much of uh, pressure. How do you deal with work-life balance? You're also a mother, you have kids. How do you deal with all this? Okay, that's the best question. Again, that's a very good <laughs> question. So again, I have, um, I have this thing about writing everything down. So you have to plan. You have to kind of like wake up in the morning and when, I mean, I have two young kids, five and seven. So my mornings are very important with me because I have breakfast with them and then I go to school and drop them. And after they are in school at about 8.15, 8.30 when I'm back home, that's the time when I realize that these are the things that I need to do in my day. And by the end of the day, I have to make that checklist of all the things. So writing is an old fashioned thing. You can either you know write on your phone or kind of keep some sort of sticker, you know, can some post it in your car or wherever you are having your office, but it's important to keep it there because that keeps reminding you of the things you need to finish in the day. And time management is about each day. If you can get that one day correct, you can go on and on and on and on. You don't have to think about a million things. You got to think of that one day. The one day goes correct and the next goes follows and that's how you go. So I think it's important to just start with the most simplest thing as to make your list. And then you set the priorities for that list? And you set your priorities for that list. So if you need to be with your family or your children for an event or for, a, this is a cutoff time. At 3 o'clock I need, from 3 to 6, I need to be with them for a certain class. 
then when they are going to have dinner. So it depends on what is your priority and obviously how you manage your time. Design or um, you know administration or operations doesn't have to be a nine to five job. You can design you know, in, uh, in, in, when you are sleeping in the middle of the night. Sometimes I wake up and I know what I want to do somewhere. It's strange, but that's, it's very important to keep these little diaries. According to me, I have so many diaries. My, my whole staff, they laugh at me because I'm always scribbling in all these million diaries. But I make a science out of it. And I know that this is for that. And it, it helps me. So it's all about how you kind of prioritize and how you understand your each day. So the items which don't match your priority list, they get delegated to your team? The items that don't match the priority list need to be on secondary list. And then you have to follow up with that because even your team needs to have that follow through. So that's another thing that you need to face with an organization of a certain size. So you make a list to what you need to follow through with who, for which, for which project. And that... So you delegate and then you monitor. Yes, you Fantastic. have to monitor. You have do to you, monitor. Do you delegate only responsibility or you also delegate authority? No, most of the time I delegate responsibility. Authority, I like to know because I'm a type of person who understands and decides on what is, um, you know, the solution. I like to be involved. So even if it is the smallest thing, I want to be involved as to what is the final decision. It should not be that there's no decision taken without them, you know, counter checking with me. So okay, I mean, so they always consult you and then they move forward. Correct. And on your satisfaction, it is taken forward. Exactly. Next question, please. Yes, Ralph. Hi, Susan. This is Ralph. Hi. Uh, you are, I think, more into residential and commercial, I think, interiors. Uh, do you do design bungalows like Spanish or Portuguese or Roman something? Do you design bungalows? Bungalows? Be, yeah, like Spanish, Roman or any other designs. And yeah. do you also design buildings? You know, the, in the fact, external of the building. The oh, that's our favorite. Building. That will yeah. be our favorite answer. That <laughs> might take two hours. <laughs> no, no, you can, you can take your time, no problem. I'm willing to you, listen. You know, like I was saying, my... Um, my influence of design and the world of art and architecture is so strong and I believe that, that there is so much in the history of art. When you talk about Spanish, there is, there is original Spain, there is the Moorish Spanish, there is your Californian Spanish. So there are many different types of uh, you know, cultures of architecture and I believe that it is very important to venture into all those with your sensibility. So yes, I do love to get into either a particular period, whether it is a Gothic period, a Renaissance period, a Spanish period, whatever time that I think that can influence my design. And yes, for the outer cladding and elevations of a building are very important. It is something that I see as something I would, I, I would like to get more into. And Agnello is my first person who has had that uh, association with me on that regard. We'll talk about that later. Sure. Yeah. But in, in, in relation to that, yes, because besides the shell of the building and the MEP and, you know, the, the entire like structural and, you know, the engineering and the, the plumbing, these are important aspects. These are all the arteries of the building. But the, prob the, the, the thing is also the facade. And how beautiful is your facade going to be and how functional and how practical. So yes, I, I, I'm not an architect, but I'm so much into architecture that I learn more, I teach myself more and more about these things. And it is an important aspect for every design, you know. Fantastic. Yes, Joe. Great, ma'am. Uh, a question to you is, firstly, I was pleasantly surprised to hear that uh, you did rendering from Paris for your project, which is a shocker, yeah. any which way. Uh, He's into a similar business. That. I'll introduce oh, him later. Exactly. Yes. So, okay. something I have to teach my staff too. Okay. Anyway, uh, I wanted to ask you, you come from a family, your mother is a very successful designer. Who would you say is your role model? Oh, In God. <laughs> <laughs> your mother is going to watch my, this video. Yeah, Be yeah. careful. <laughs> No, my mother, my mother is probably the most beautiful woman on earth. 
I'm not saying this because she's my mother, but she's the most practical and peace-loving person on earth. So as a role model, yes, she has been the most vital role model in my life. Um, we are four siblings, three sisters and one brother, and each of us are in a creative field. So definitely my parents have a very strong creative aspect and a creative uh, gene in them. So it's passed on the DNA. So I, I cannot take that away from her. She is my number one role model. And, but after her, I definitely have been fortunate enough to meet many other role models. So it's not about one role model. It's about, you know, in your life, there are so many people that you can learn from. And it's not even about age, because Sometimes you can learn from your children, and that's a lot that comes into my design, is from the storybooks that I read them. So you could have a role model in what your child would tell you, and you could have something that you look up to what he's telling you that would make sense in your design. So I just think that there are many different role models that a person comes across in their life, and my mother being the most important. Why do you get so inspired by Steve Jobs? I think Steve Jobs was a very creative human being who believed in the whole thing of thinking different. And his whole innovation with Apple and creating a product that was beyond and out of the box and how his whole struggle has been is inspirational because at one point he was completely out and done. And, and, and nobody believed in him and everything was, but he, he never lost his faith. And also, you know, the, it takes a lot of challenge to bring a product that is different and that has not been shown out there. So you are, you, you want to, you want to be accepted, but you, you know, you are worried about what people think. Most of the time you're worried about what people think of your product and that makes you get scared to back off and not be that passionate. But he had a lot of guts. And I think that every entrepreneur and every creator in business, even in a service, not only in design, in a service, should think out of the box, should think beyond what they, their expectation is. And like I said, the human brain is unbelievable. And there is nothing that can actually you know, come in your way as a roadblock. It's how you take your own decision to go towards that space. That's what Fantastic. I Fantastic. There are a lot of days in a month where she listens to Steve Jobs on a daily basis. So that's her learning edge. Probably that might also be a de-stressor. So I'm sure if we try to, YouTube has really opened up the world to learn. If we can identify people whom we can listen to regularly, I'm sure a lot of entrepreneurs will be able to learn smarter tricks of doing business. Next question, please. Hi. Yes. Hello. <laughs> Hi, Suzanne Vernon here. Nice to meet you. Hi. Same here. Uh, just wanted to ask you, as Rajesh has already tagged you as a passion pranam, and uh, you generally in your company and your organization, uh, authority flows through you. So how much time do you spend with the charcoal project during the day? Ask my team. <laughs> I, I breathe, I think, I walk, I, I am Charcoal Project. My life is this place. And um, for me, it is, it is not a job. It is not a business. It is not something to prove. It is just something that I love. And I think because I love what I do, it comes very easily for me to time manage and not feel worried or stressed about it. And I think that's my biggest gift from God. <laughs> oh, I think she spends long hours. She spends long hours because when you, when you do what you like, life becomes a picnic. So I'm sure that that's what she's enjoying. Totally. totally. That's what she's enjoying. I don't feel like I'm working sometimes because it's, it's so uh, exciting and yes. it's so motivating. And I'm sure that's how it is with each one of the people sitting in this hall. Yes, each I'm one sure. of them, I'm sure the, uh, the clock and the calendars don't mean anything to all these people sitting in here. And that's why they too are successful. Absolutely. Next question, please. Yes, Rajesh. 
आफ्टर राजेश विवेक आफ्टर विवेक मिस्टर संदीप केकाने एंड आफ्टर दैट सिंधु क्वेश्चन Yes. Hi, Sujan. This Hello. This is Dr. Rajesh here. And Geeta Hi. also. Yes. Uh, my question to you is, uh, when I heard you talking about your team, you were very passionate about your team. And I understand that it's very important to have a great team. So that, that's how you create a great, great many things like you do here. So Thank what you. So what does a person need to be? Or how do you select your team? What is it, what is it that you look for in a person when you're selecting your team? Okay, that's, that's a good question. Um, I think that the first thing, like I was saying, please sit. Yeah, I'm yeah. Fine, No, I'm please fine. sit. The first thing that is important to look for is, like, you have to follow your instinct. You have to, energy. Um, another very big influence who I read a lot on is Albert Einstein. Wow. Because I think that he had so many thoughts which it's about how you kind of understand what is the law of energy. When you are with a person, whether it is somebody from your team, whether it is a friend, whether it is a family member, there is an exchange of energy that happens. That exchange of energy, you decide what it makes you feel. And when you understand what it makes you feel is when you are, your instinct is telling you that that person can work for you and can be better and provide you a more of a you know a support system so i am a very intuitive and you know uh, i have an instinct to kind of find good energies so my only way of choosing team is energy it's not about credentials it's not about work experience it is something that i have to follow it's the energy that i can catch on to and i will know that that energy and me can work together and i will motivate them even if they've not had enough experience I know that I will motivate them, I will give them that much love that they will want to do better for me. That's something that I look for, the energy. Fantastic, fantastic. The next question. Yes, Geeta. Ladies first, Vivek. Okay. <laughs> yes, Geeta. One second, Geeta. Just use the mic, quick. Hi, Suzanne. Hi. We were talking about energy. And uh, when you deal with your customers, that's not in your hands. I mean, you will have solid energy sappers too. You will have people who are varied, uh, you know, people not of your wavelength and not connecting and you've just taken the project. And it's a project you have to complete. How do you deal with a situation like that? There are a lot of times when there is a client who is, you know, obviously not in sync with what you want for them. And they, they have a lot of issues that they need to be dealt with but each client is the king you have to think like that if you don't think like that then you can never grow so whatever they say however they say it you have to understand where they are coming from and what is their need for saying it and then eventually when you are like what you are they will feel bad for doing the things they do and then they will come on your side so it is very important to never make them uh, uh, kind of feel that their thoughts are bad. Say that, fine, I like the way you have thought about this. Give them another point of view. And then eventually when you, they see that you are being so accommodative and you are being so, uh, you know, like you have, you have so, much of, uh, so much of time to kind of give them, they will feel that they need to also think about what you're saying. So it's, it's human relation. Like I said, psychology is the hugest, hugest plus point for a business. Uh, uh, for a business, for a practice, for uh, a service. Psychology, I mean, like there was one thing that we were talking about earlier. If I wasn't an interior designer, what would I be? Absolutely. And that is a psychiatrist. Really? Because, yeah. You sound so, scary now. I'm not joking. <laughs> I would. I would. I love the way. I love the way people kind of like have their own ways of thinking. And I feel that when you meet a person, it's important to understand where they have been influenced, where they are coming from. That's why they're different from you. And then you understand. Okay, so we can work on this together. And we don't need to get into that conversation. It's important to gauge your client and. 
that is something that psychology helps you through, you know. So I think the learning from your answer is you need to be adaptable, you need to be diplomatic and you, you need, need to wait for your turn to come around. You need to kind of make them know that you are interested for their opinion and you need to also give them the credit that they are thinking in a certain way. You can't just negate what they're saying. It's important to give them that respect, you know. As Fantastic. The next question. Yes. Yes, Vivek. Hi, Vivek here. Hello. So there's Red Dot Design, which is a certificate of Pi Excellence in the world. And with so many designers in India from National Institute of Design and NIFT. NIFT, yes, yes. correct. So uh, does India have a concept of rewarding designers with a red dot, which is internationally accepted? Does India have a, sorry? A concept of a red dot certificate for, uh, for a product certificate. Does India have a concept or are you planning to start you know, something? I, I like mean, that? according to me, like I said, there are so many upcoming designers that come out from these schools like NIFT and uh, NID. you know uh, NID and all these various schools all over. And they need to be motivated. They need to have, a, like you're saying, some kind of like, um, you know, uh, an award ceremony for talent and stuff like that. But it has to be done with br that much importance. Maybe like what El Deco is doing now. El Deco just did last year. We were a part of it. In uh, the Asian Pains people, they took over that whole thing in, in uh, um, it was in Delhi. And they promoted a lot of young talent. They gave them uh, a lot of, you know, prizes and all that who have just come out from school. It's important to motivate. Yes, you have to motivate the youth. You, that is tomorrow. That is in the, in the India for tomorrow. And that is your, uh, you know, your goal as a designer or as an individual. If you are from the fraternity and you're from the team, you need to promote the young upcoming people for sure. Small part to my, to my question. Have you designed any utility product or a, like a new design for a mobile or for an Indian mobile or any gadget like that? I would love to get into product design. That's my next thing which we are working on. Um, product design which has IT, which has technology. So maybe a chair that you can put an iPod on, you know, so something like that. So yes, I want to get into product design. Another very big inspiration to me in my life has been Philippe Stark and how he thinks and how his whole how his design sensibility has gone into every product, whether taps or whether tiles or whether, you know, uh, furniture or housing or developments. Design can be used anywhere. It's now how you want to take it to every level. Like I said, the charcoal, you ignite the space, you know. Fantastic. Thank yes, you. the next question. Sindhu. Oh, I'm sorry, Sandeep. Sandeep. Sandeep is waiting for a long time. No, no, no. Very good evening, Sudan, madam. Good evening. I, I want your opinion about legal framework for any business in today's world. Legal framework. opinions? The and importance of legal oh, framework. It's absolutely important. Like, today uh, we get into a client and relationship between a company and client, a designer and a client. I think legal uh, help and legal kind of documentation from the beginning is a very important thing that just secures both sides. And it is something that everybody should get into. We haven't gone so much into it, but we are in fact in the process of getting together some, the entire uh, uh, kind of like these, uh, the, the, the signing off with your, uh, with your client and your designer with probably the, Every team that you hire or you associate with, you should have an agreement, you should have some kind of rules or some kind of things that you follow legally because otherwise you can get into a lot of mess and then to get out of those messes it just drains you because we had a little bit of an inf uh, you know, uh, experience in that. And again, law is not my subject but you need to educate yourself. In an entrepreneur, you need to educate yourself with every aspect of the business. Law is important. You need to, you know, keep it in mind. So you need to adapt the right uh, rules, regulations, 100%. policies, 
documentations, contracts in place you have to protect to. your IPR, to protect your designs. Your IP, to protect your intellectual property. Sometimes, you know, there's so many people who have completely like copied, copied us. Yes. And um, in India, IP laws are really bad. It's bad. And it's sad because you can create something and then the next day somebody else will have it, they just change a little bit and that's it. So the whole thing is that, yes, you have to protect your intellectual property and your intellectual property is your brain. So it's important that every designer who is growing and every service needs to take into a correct kind of, uh, you know, some kind, they need to have an, a support team which is with, you know, with the law and a law firm and stuff like that, I feel. Fantastic. One last question, Sindhu. Yeah. Hi, Suzanne. Hi. Uh, I wanted to understand from you, I mean, you've been a, a celebrity mom, uh, you, you are a celebrity wife, you're a celebrity daughter as well. Uh, what plans do you have to, you know, make charcoal um, completely different from the celebrity Suzanne? In fact, um, <laughs> yeah. That is important. It's very important to have an individual in your, um, like when you are, when, when I think Suzanne Roshan, if I'm, a, if I'm just a person who wants to think of Suzanne Roshan, the first thing I should think of is what she does. That is a goal that I need to get to. I think that I am climbing the ladder towards that, but yes, there is a lot more that you need to do and to and to get to get out there to have discussions like these to kind of like talk about and to make people understand that it is not about um, you know it is about an a desire of a of a design mind of a design person it's not something that you're doing as a time pass you know because you have too much money it's not that so it's it's important to get that out there. And yes, in the beginning, there, there were a lot of notions that, you know, is she good or is she like the others? Because there are so many who have trickled into this business just because of their status. But the, the thing is that um, you can't really get into proving a point, like I said before. You can't go out there saying what you are. Your work will prove your, your worth. And that's the most important thing. A man is always what your work is. That's what I believe, a man or woman. <laughs> Fantastic. Can we all applaud for the wonderful way that she has handled, the wonderful way that she has handled all the questions. Unfortunately, we did not get a single question which could you know, challenge you and you would be dumbfounded and no answer for the question. So that means you are good in what you are doing. Congratulations for that. Thank you. And uh, I would like to request Shugra to come up and give a token of honor, respect oh, from thank inspiring you. conversations. Can we have pictures, please? Oh, thank you. I will oh, want lovely. you to <laughs> give the <laughs> the give, uh, to give the plaque to Suzanne, and I would like to request. Mr. Suhash Deshpande to come up. And I would like to request him to hand over this cup to Suzanne Roshan. <laughs> please, 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 please. not be happy with one question probably so he wants to have a separate discussion Suzanne before we uh, conclude before we conclude I would like you to know each friend of mine so I'll get them introduced yeah not there I'll just do it quickly here and then Suzanne has insisted that without any conditions unconditionally she has insisted that she wants to click a picture with each one of you yes. <laughs> Friends, let's begin from the front. Mr. Devang Shah. Devang Shah is into construction. We'll click the pictures later on. I'll just introduce quickly. Uh, Mr. Nagu Chidambaram. 
the son. Does the surname sound familiar? Yeah. <laughs> he is from Chennai. He is an industrialist. He is into the automobile industry and also into construction. He also has a theater there, which is a very historical theater in Tamil Nadu. In Tamil Nadu, movies is religion. That's uh, Mrs. Uh, Geeta Nagu. If you want to know who's the person who drives him, the person is sitting next to him. She is an educationist and she also likes to maintain a very independent identity. Uh, well, she looks, she looks familiar. <laughs> Coincidentally, she happens to be my wife, Shugra. She is in the activity of education with me and uh, she is the backbone for the activity. Backbone for Agnello. <laughs> <laughs> That's Mr. Kailash Biani. Mr. Kailash Biani is into investments and equity funding and he's a finance guy out and out. And who drives him? I is need, the person next I need to your him. advice in yeah. life. <laughs> <laughs> the person next to him is the one who drives him and she's now very interesting. She's uh, uh, educating herself with an MBA degree at SPJN College of Management. And that's their son-in-law here. I'm not aware about the business that you're into. Colorants. Okay. Uh, the young man behind is, can we, can you stand up so that uh, visibility? That's uh, Vernon Mathias. He's a very young and a dynamic entrepreneur from the Christian community. He's in the packaging industry and is now in the oil business. Everybody gets rich when they get, when they get oil. So Uttam, Coco Uttam is the brand that is creating in the oil industry, but they are into packaging industry in a big way. Mr. Joseph Matthews, he is into interiors. He does large-scale projects for companies across the country, like Sherkhan.com, Flipkart. So they can create showrooms in five days, seven days, ten days, anywhere in the country. And he also happens to be the chairman of Dimensions, which is the global Christian chamber of commerce. Mr. Ralph Pereira, he is into uh, industries. He is an industrialist. He is into pre precision engineering, and he is also into construction. He is a developer as well. Sylvester Rodericks was with Microsoft and now he is having his own ERP company. Mr. Deepak Bimani is a master of the water technology and he is a very powerful associate of the Kirloskars, the best pump makers in the country. That Mr. Uh, Siddhu Bimani, that's uh, Deepak Bimani's son, he is an IT professional but he is into business with his father now. That's Dr. Rajesh Doshi. Dr. Rajesh Doshi is doctor by qualification but not by business. <laughs> Dr. Rajesh Doshi is into the manufacturing of jewellery. He has a beautiful unit of diamond jewellery manufacturing in Seeps and 100% exported to the United States of America. Okay. Now he is also going to start manufacturing for the local market. We have got a psychiatrist here. He is a signature oh, psychiatrist. Uh, nice. He can see the signature and predict things. Very interesting. You need to talk to him. Really? Uh, that is Sindhu. Uh, Sindhu is into the training business. They educate people to become better entrepreneurs. Okay. Uh, sh uh, her husband is Mr. Santosh Nair, the only man I know in Mumbai who can fill up the Shanmukhananda Hall. You can't fill up a Shanmukhananda Hall even if the event is free. They charge and fill it up. Wow. So, <laughs> which means they are so good. Which means they are so good. And uh, Santosh Nair is Sindhu's husband. Okay. <laughs> That's Dr. Lina Doshi, the, the lady behind Rajesh Doshi, uh, she happens to be his wife. Uh, she is a fantastic ophthalmologist, wow. ophthalmologist, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> the lady next to her is again a very electrifying personality, Sangeeta Kamath. She is into education, she is into Vedic Maths in more than 650 schools in Maharashtra. Wow. And she is also Vedic doing maths. an activity called Vedic Maths. Wow. She is also doing an activity called WordBiz. WordVis is an activity which really improves your pronunciation, knowledge of words. It's her baby which she has invented. Okay. So she's also an inventor of this uh, educational concept for school kids. Wow. That's Mr. Hello. Samir Dalvi. Samir Dalvi is having a creative agency. So the logos and all the backdrops and all that that you see okay. is all done by Samir Dalvi. Oh, okay. The tall gentleman, uh, as, a, as a leader, I learn from a lot of people. What I've learned from this gentleman in leadership skills is sacrifice. He is the founder chairman of Christian Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Wow. A lovely person. His business is packaging. Uh, he's got his units in Goa, Vasai and Mumbai. Now he's starting a large factory, over four acres in Goa. Mr. Vincent Mathias. That's Mr. Paul Ritesh. He's done his MBA from London Hi. and uh, education from New Zealand also. He's my youngest brother, handling the call center of our organization. Oh, okay. Milind Dige is into technology. 
He is uh, all social media for us. Mm -hmm. And a lot of prominent clients in Bombay is handled by Milindi. Nice. He can be of great help to you as well. Yeah. That's Jyotin, one Hi. of the best people I know who understands income tax to the T. He's a very proficient wow. chartered accountant and also an MBA in finance. Wow. Mr. Paresh, yeah, I'll go, just go this way. Mr. Paresh is again a chartered accountant, all chartered accountants sitting together. <laughs> and he, he is interested in the education zone, wants to give, give back. So he's also into the education where he teaches commerce students. Okay. Pallavi Desai is into Vastu Shastra. Okay. And uh, probably she would say to the buyer of this uh, gorilla where it should be kept, how it should face, where it should face. So she's into Vastu. My very dear friend, Hi. Rohit Rahul, he's also a developer. Okay. Uh, my very dear friend, no Mr. Suhash Deshpande. No introduction. No, no introduction. <laughs> no introduction. He's, uh, he's again a very good inspiration for me. That's, that is Mrs. Lobo. She runs no. an industry started by her husband, Mr. Henry Lobo, which, who's the chairman of our Hello. Christian Chamber of Commerce and Industry. They are also into packaging industry. Okay. This Hi. lovely lady runs a very famous organization of which I'm sure you also might be a customer. You must have heard about this flower brand, Florista. 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 Yeah, they are yeah, into yeah. flowers in a big in way all across the country. Okay. That's, that's the lady who's done it. Mm -hmm. And she is the wife of Samir Dalvi. Okay, nice. That's Z, Z Manak Singh. Z is with Thai, okay. the Indus entrepreneurs, the best organization for India to breed its talent in the right direction. Wow. Okay. And she heads Mumbai. Wow. That's <laughs> the Vivek Mendonsa. Hello. He, he is the marketing director, marketing direc director for Lawrence and Mayo, a very multifaceted and a very dynamic gentleman. Mm -hmm. Accidentally happens to be Suhani's husband. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Henry Lobo is the chairman of the Christian Chamber of Commerce yes, and Industry, sorry. a lovely human being and our leader in the community. Nice. Mr. Henry Lobo. Welcome, sir. That's Abhijit Deshmukh. Abhijit Deshmukh is a very senior naval officer. Mm -hmm. In local terms, he has got the designation which is the additional commissioner of police in Mumbai. So Abhijit wow. uh, Deshmukh, it's a pleasure nice that you're pleasure. here. That's his wife here, she's a doctor. Hi. And uh, thanks a lot for being here today. That's Lopa Walia, that's my Hi. right hand in my organization. A very, very efficient, she is 10 people into one. Wow. Sorry, I said less, I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 so that's Lopa Walia, Lopa, thanks for being here. Tina Desai, she, teach, she can teach even the visa officers how to issue visas. She has a company which is into visa consultation. Okay. Brilliant person in that. For any country, any visa. Oh. Hi. Shockingly, that's her son. <laughs> and she didn't have a child marriage. Uh, the last person over there, this is a very interesting personality. My very dear friend for the last 18 years, from the time he stepped into Mumbai, on his first day of service, from then onwards, he's my friend. He's the Assistant Commissioner of Sales Tax, Mr. Tatya Saheb Dere. <laughs> <laughs> and he is the godfather, as far as the yeah, knowledge of you. sales tax is concerned. A very, very helping gentleman, Love. understands the rule and laws to the T. Wow. And one of the most knowledgeable sales tax officers you will ever come across. Wow. And I'm very proud of him. Thank you for coming. Tata Sir Dere. <laughs> Advocate Sandeep Kekane. He asked Hi. you the legal question. He is a very good lawyer who practices crime. I don't want to oh. call him as a criminal lawyer. <laughs> so he's a very good advocate practicing uh, crime. He is again a very great human being and very proficient with what he does. So thanks a lot, friends, Thank and you. thanks a lot, thanks Suzanne. Everyone. Did I miss out anybody? Did I miss out anybody by mistake? Suhani, how can uh, I no forget you? How can I forget you? Uh, Suhani see. Mendonsa. I know. The only wrong event that she ever managed was her own marriage with Vivek. <laughs> <laughs> a lovely person, a darling of a person, and we love her a lot. All the inspiring conversations, events are curated, edited, created, right. handled, wow. everything by Su Suhani. I would now like to thank those people who have done this All two inspiring team. conversations. For the team. Suhani for the event management. Where is Prashant? Prashant is the guy who is into all thank the videos, you. uploading, editing, everything. Samir, can you please stand up? Samir Dalvi is the gentleman for all the designs of inspiring thank conversations. You. So, uh, oh, Milindige. He is the gentleman who handles the 
multiplication of numbers of viewers on the YouTube of all the content that we develop. Oh, okay. So, Susan, that's all. That's my little family. Thank they you. They are my very close friends. Thank and you. And the other friends of mine who are going to gun for me now after this program, because you cut down the numbers of how many people can attend. How did we fit? How did we fit? We should have put some here. <laughs> so, thanks a lot. And friends, once again, I thank you from the bottom of my heart to brace the Mumbai traffic and devote yes. your time really? for this evening because I understand that giving time is giving a part of your life. Exactly. I really appreciate that. Thank and you. And Susanna, special thanks on behalf of all my friends Thank that you, you could make out your time for this event. Share your thoughts. I'm sure what you said will mean a lot not only to these friends of mine who are sitting in here but this content will educate a lot of viewers who are going to watch this content Thank on the you. YouTube. Thank you. Again. Thanks a lot, Thank Susan. you. Thank Thanks you a lot. so much. Thanks a lot. I Thank enjoyed you. it. Thank you. <laughs> I really did.